Parental discretion is advised. This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, 14 men turns out to be the perfect amount. We talk about hometown heroes, and we have a lengthy discussion on how to save TNA. Delta Burt, yeah! Stick around. This edition of Wrestling Mayhem Show is brought to you by... Fleshlight. Head on over to WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Look for that banner and click on it. You'll know which one. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 388. We're in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. I am the Sorgatron. There is no other. Uh, we're talking about ready to talk wrestling from a fan's perspective here and have some fun. The only way we know how with the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, with me uh, from uh, multiple an- camera angles is DJ Lunchbox, Pop of the LB, uh, Mr. Pound himself at DJ Lunchbox. How you doing? Good evening. Wrestling Mayhem Americans, welcome. Yes, in all lifetime. And also joining us in a less creepy location from San Antonio, Texas, where it's always sunny, is Eamon. I can make it creepy. You can what? Ah, no, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, it's somewhat sunny, even though it's not sunny right now because it's dark out. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Texas is weird. That fuck? makes sense. All right, and also join us from Johnstown, PA. The hey, hey, the town of water. Hey, Bobby FJ Town, how you doing? Good. Um, it actually hasn't rained in um four minutes. All right, we're talking. <laughs> of, we t- we're talking about the weather, so now we're a typical podcast. Um, and it's not sunny and bright because it's dark outside. <laughs> Same as in Texas. Nailed it. <laughs> sure. This is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube uh, in audio and video forms, amongst other places. Just look up Wrestling Mayhem Show and video, audio. You'll, you'll find us all kinds of different places. A bunch of links over there on WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Drop us a line to that email address at Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0. We love getting your voicemails here, your voicey voice here, because this is primarily an audio podcast, uh, even though we do have video versions as well. Um, so let's get right into it the only way. Oh, hey, every uh, you guys enjoy us live like the uh, Mayhem Americans. I like that term, LB. I should use it so much more. Uh, <laughs> over at live.sorgatronmedia.com in the chat room uh you can chat with us you can see 54 people are already joining us in the live stream thanks to justin.tv uh and people chatting it up over there again live.sorgatronmedia.com so if you're on the stream finding us on justin tv please hop over there so you can join us in the conversation as well uh it's really easy to log into that uh in your facebook twitter um i think something else too uh so let's get right into it yeah what no Nothing. Okay, let's get right into it with the fan mail, and I see I'm marked for this first one, guys. Uh, so uh, let's get right into it. Uh, to yeah. the W, to the WMS Nation. Triple H is making a fool of himself. I repeat, Triple H is making a fool of himself. First, when the American Dragon Daniel Bryan became champion, he got stripped of the title for knocking a referee out. Then on SmackDown, he decided to call off the gauntlet with RVD and the Shield still in the ring. Now he decides an 11-on-3 handicap match with the match, with all this matchmaking. It seems Hunter Hearst Helmsley is making his presence felt when he's taking over. As the match went in, Daniel Bryan decided to pin Roman Reigns for the first time in the promotion's history. As it continued, Ziggler put Dean Ambrose out of his misery, and Daniel finished the job with Seth Rollins out. When it was over, the Uso Ziggler and Bryan himself survived the onslaught. There's no doubt in my mind he will get it back at the next pay-per-view. See you guys later. PRK, Mr. Techwood Drive. Yeah, he, uh, that was a pretty crazy match. I know going into it, guys, we you know it was 11 on 3. What was going on with this match? We had a few guys that had matches before it uh, on Raw. Uh, and, and, you know, that's one of those matches that's so gimmicked out, you're just like, ah, nothing interesting is going to come out of this, right? No, nobody was yeah. excited. 
exact yeah. opposite happened. <laughs> yeah, and then it was like it was amazing. You, mm-hmm. you, you, you. This again lends to we talked about this last night on the raw wrap up um, that you can see over on on the site. Uh, they were given what in most cases would have been a bland ending to Raw, and the combination of all those guys in the Shield, Roman Reigns included, uh, with Daniel Bryan, with Ziggler, with with the rest of them. Everybody had a good showing in that match. Mm-hmm. Even the guys, you know, even like did somebody say Zack Ryder even had a yeah. decent showing in that match, right? Yeah. Um, that's he got his stuff in, and that's you know that's, exactly. They, it, they were fourteen guys in that match, and everyone you know got to do something. And I thought it, it would made for a very interesting match. Justin Gabriel right. even got knocked back into being a human. Yeah. Instead of a werewolf, I mean. and, I, and I like that it was fairly unpredictable. I like that it ended four and one against uh, Seth Rollins. Yeah, and yeah. I didn't like that they just like dwindled it down until it was one on one. And you, you know, know, I've never seen an eliminate like even Survivor Series four and four, five on five. I, I, I you often don't see a well paced elimination like that. Mm-hmm. You know, because the yeah. guys eliminated it was like okay, now it's two on six. You know. It dwindled down to this, like, are they really going to do this? Um, I, I, it was it was really well done. I loved the part when it was down to four, and they did the shield surround the ring thing. I thought mm-hmm. that was perfect. It, it, it was it was really cool. Um, the, but the Triple H throwing them under the bus thing, it seems, I, I'm not sure what's happening here. You know, um, it's kind of out of nowhere. Yeah, it's, it, it it's is. interesting. It's something different. It is. Mm-hmm. It is. Um, I mean, some of the discussion last night was uh, about Triple H being inconsistent. Um, but I think you need to pair it with, um, and I know a lot of people probably don't see this, but on SmackDown, and they've been putting these on the website too, apparently. This is where they're bringing them from. Because they say on the website, we talked to him at Triple H. He has these interviews that, that talk about what he did on Raw. Mm-hmm. That are like, you know, if you watch, like, Bill Gates talking about how the company works, you know, or Tim, Cook, or Tim Cook with Apple when he talked to, uh, uh, the, the, to Brian Williams. You know, it's like, I listen to him, and he makes me believe what he's doing is the right thing, <laughs> or at least that he yeah. believes it, right? He's like, mm-hmm. in a business, you have to do this, this, and this. And that's exactly what we were doing for, for, for the sake of business and everything. Like, it's like he's talking to a stockholder, and I'm eating every word. Um, and again, this is something that I think you're only seeing on SmackDown. They're not bringing it over to Raw. And I think a lot of people, when they watch this, aren't getting that full picture for that. And so they're like, this doesn't make any sense. And they're throwing their hands up, you know? But they don't they barely touch on that stuff they're doing on SmackDown. They're not forgetting about this main corporate storyline on SmackDown, which I think is tremendous. And it really rewards the people watching SmackDown. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, um, now we got another one. Eamon, you got this next one. Yes, I do from a good friend, Dustin. Uh, he sends in to the Mayhemians. Uh, Kayfabe News is hilarious. They usually run some funny and wild articles that are just way out of left field. From Zeb Coulter's accusation of not being American and demand to see his birth certificate to the idea of Randy Orton realizing that he is a legend and thus ending his life as the true legend killer that he is. Kayfabe News is perhaps one of the most enjoyable news sites in the world, filled with nothing but speculative dirt sheets that only manage to make sure in-the-know fans seem like total buffoons. It's not meant to be taken seriously for those who take it as such they should seriously think about stepping back and finding a bit more meaning in life perhaps even purchase a flashlight modeled after their favorite star of the adult film industry <laughs> just head on over cheap plug but i get a kick out of the lb shilling out his plugs at any given moment uh yeah i'm gonna keep it at that no moment of me marking out for my beloved tna just passing on a website that i find enjoyable and as a uh, not to speak for everyone, but we also find KFM news very enjoyable. If you, uh, it, pops, the, it pops if up you go a to the, good re- bit. I was going to say, if you go to the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, there's a lot of times where we do share news from the uh, KFM news website that we find hilarious. And um, and, and, there, and I'm a victim of, like, usually, like, after this show, when I'm editing it at 2 in the morning, believing the headlines. I mean, they're like... There, if you're if you're familiar with the Onion and those headlines, and someone's like, "Wait, did this really?" Ah, oh, man, you know. I mean, it, it's April Fools every day with these guys. Raw's um, going to nine hours, by the way. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I believe it. Uh, however, I do have some questions. Mm-hmm. Number one: 
Do you think it was a smart decision for ROH to run the iPay-Per-View for free? I'm not complaining, just wondering if you think it might help grow their fan base a bit. Um, it can only help. It can only Yes, only I think help. it's very good. I they they I needed think, that. I don't know what, I don't know how it could have damaged it. Unless they didn't deliver reason, on the iPad. It didn't review. work. It didn't need, work for me for some reason. They needed to prove that they can do it. They they, they had so many times when paying customers didn't get the show that they needed to do something. And I'm surprised yeah, they went they back to because I thought they were like, we're, we're not going to do it anymore. Yeah, well, they, I, the, the uh, statement came out like the day of the pay-per-view that uh, Go Fight Live was going to uh, provide a stream to show that they would be able to provide it. And that way they were doing they were going to do the show for free. Wow. Go, they uh, went to Go Fight Live. Yeah, and it started good. And then you had more problems towards the end, uh, mm-hmm. including the main event, which, yeah, that sucks. I don't know. I don't, I feel like I feel like if they had done it well, it could have gotten them more fans to you know be interested in buying an eye pay per view, um, b- because it didn't necessarily go as well. Mm-hmm. Those people that weren't going to buy the eye pay per view because they already had problems before are still not going to buy the eye pay per view. I go. So back it's to, really I, it's really no loss. I go back to um, I think well one this is as much an audition for Ring of Honor staying with eye pay per views as it was a as it was a uh, audition for uh, Go Fight Live. Right? Um, right, and I go back to I've seen I've seen the specs uh, that GoFight Live says all you need is do this, this, and this, um, and you can't depend on the people that do live streaming. Do have to do ten times more than what I think a lot of these companies are doing to do mm-hmm. it dependable. And if you're making p- people shell out money for these streams, you better do your due j- diligence. This is a t- from a tech side of things, and that's yeah. exactly why I don't do it. Yeah, this, I, I couldn't get the stream working for some reason. Yeah. I just gave up. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, 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 no Bobby there. I, I'm working yeah. on getting I'm working on getting uh, uh, some of the voicemails up on his computer there. So <laughs> And it's such uh, a shame we- too, because if it just worked properly, that would be a gold mine for Ring of Honor. It mm-hmm. would just be spot on. But mm-hmm. But then then we, then we see WWE has problems with their internet stream on the Xbox and stuff like that. I mean, WrestleMania got screwed up, you know? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I these guys, the internet is a different thing. They just say, I buy this truck and it connects to that satellite dish and it works. You know? Uh, this is new technology. It's a little more temperamental. Uh, Mark Cuban said that, you know, years ago said, you know, internet video doesn't work because it's not centralized enough. It's ridiculous. And this is this is this is where he's right. Um I mean, Netflix has to do a lot of stuff to make that work every day. You know, mm-hmm. you did the, the, the stuff and you hear stories about these servers that you never heard about, yet all your traffic runs over these, um, getting in fights with them over cost. Um, I mean, this is this is a whole new world of technology and companies and issues. And, and you know, they keep running into the problems. So not yep. everybody has the solution. Yeah, it may, may, may not be one. Uh, number two, did you know that AJ Styles can deliver a solid promo? All you have to do is put him next to Dixie, and he instantly becomes tolerable. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yep, I guess. <laughs> I, I, solid, wa- I watched that solid, one. It, solid's it's, the appropriate word, not good or great or, yeah, but solid. Tolerable. I'll give him solid. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, uh, wait, wait, we were looking for comments on that. Was there a question? I forgot. Uh, did I you know AJ Styles can deliver a solid promo? Yo, know, I, I watched that promo on YouTube, and uh, yeah, it was. It, it felt so mean to. It was ridiculous. I was really. It was really tired and just kind of really, guys. Yep. Really. <laughs> it, it's. Not, I mean, he sounded okay. Mm-hmm. I just didn't believe anything he was saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know. That happens. Uh, number three, I love Tyson Kidd and hope to see him return to action in the near future. With him being a prominent character on Total Divas, do you think he might actually move up to the mid card when he returns? Love to see it. Good platform. Starts starts him off. I, I think Gizmo's uh, going to get more of a push when when Gizmo comes back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gizmo can do a uh, 450 off the top rope. Yep. Yeah, I'm not confident that Tyson Kidd will. Be a thing for much longer. Aww. No, he'll I'm be sorry, in the company. I They're getting murdered. 
<laughs> I'll just not not escape the mid card. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he also mentions, how sad is it that I, it took a spot on Total Divas and a wedding with one of their stars in order for me to think that WWE might give him a push? <laughs> yeah. Uh, regards, sure. Dustin. P.S. Here's a link to a Kayfabe News article that I think you might enjoy, and it is the link to the article of the Make-A-Wish Foundation sending Cena to visit dying TNA. <laughs> it's straight funny. Wow. So yeah, that was Dustin. Awesome, and I think that's all our emails. We do have two voicemails from Bo Diggity. Uh, first of all, we talked last week about... Uh, oh, let's actually put that on me. There's Russell Fan drinking. Uh <laughs> Hi, how's it going? Hey. Wrestling Mayhem Show, sponsored by Coca-Cola. No. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 there it is. Diggity. Not my car. It's been talking to you on my phone. Yes. Now listen, I know yes. we're talking about the stock market. Let Bo Diggity put his suspenders on. I'll tell you a little something about it. Here's the deal. WWE stock trading in $9.83 a share. Two is high about eleven fifty three, so it's not off too terribly much. At the end of the attitude era, it's about twenty five dollars a share. Now, if you want to get in and you just want to buy some stocks just to say you own some stocks, go to oneshare.com and you can buy single shares with a very nice certificate to say that you own a share of the WWE. These are not voting shares, these are class A shares. They just mean you own a share of the company. And as the company does well, you can sell them off and make a little bit of money off of it. I can't talk to that guy and make very much. So, uh, there you go. And I just wanted to break that sort of thing down. You also can go to your local Wall Street store uh, or go on, like, Fidelity.com or Stop Trade or something like that, and you can do that. I highly recommend not doing any of the above. Just help buy it for one share just to say if you own it, if that's all you want to do. If you're going to seriously get involved in the stock market, you want a financial advisor, somebody who knows money better than you do. So this has been Bo fucking Diggity. The F is for fiduciary decisions that you should be making properly with the help of a financial advisor. Uh, Fuck, you shit together. You've been sleeping on the fucking couch all day, and you've been eating spaghetti and you shit get your money together. This is where God I lost it. it. Huh. Someone about SpaghettiOs? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know about SpaghettiOs? I, I, I'm not sure. Um, I love SpaghettiOs. Well, uh, th- thank you for that. Yeah, because we were talking about, like, you know, uh, like you said, Leo, if you want to just buy one share of something. So it's just oneshare.com. Um, so I'm going to go get my Apple. I'm going to go get my WWE. I'm going to go get, uh, well, I like Google. I like Google. Um, I like Google. I want a piece yeah, of that. I like Google too. I want a piece of that. You know, I, yeah, just to be like, cool, I be want like, a piece of that. Hey, I own a part of that company. <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, that's really all I'm looking for. Just it's kind of like a, a memento, memento of it. So, um, yes, yeah. Uh, so we also have, he uh, submitted a new way to do voicemails. He actually sent me a file. I'm, I'm presuming this is a different uh, app or something because it, it sent me this audio file and also sent me a text file that said, woo. <laughs> so whatever not. that's about. So let's see. He, I think he gets a little ranty on it. This one's a little long. We'll, we'll see how far we want to we wanna go with this one. Uh, this is the wrong keyboard, and they're there, there. Woo! It is better. Fucking uh, much yeah, better than quality. Clear. Guess what, kids? Very clear. Bo Diggity's got his own voicemail system. Yeah, Google Voice ain't cutting shit off now. You bitch. <laughs> Just want to talk to you about Monday Night Raw. That is the first time I've ever seen a giant tag team match work out well. As we mentioned, Dear the Shield, never go away. You can live in my heart forever if you need a home. <laughs> what? Uh, what? That was no, a that really fun tag team match. I don't oh, yeah. understand why that doesn't happen more often. Um, good job, Zack Ryder, for getting on television. Good job. And eating a spear. <laughs> uh, also, Seth Rollins is once again champion. proving himself to be completely immortal. Um... <laughs> The running knee that he took from Brian, mm-hmm. and then he, that's, has anybody ever done the, the backflip thing off of a knee? Well, Seth Rollins has, you bish. 
Uh, <laughs> fan, and to get get could kiss, and I uh, there was like an internet fanfic like waiting to happen. I bet they scissor in the one that I wrote. I mean, the one that someone else <laughs> on the internet probably wrote. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I almost want to let this go to two minutes just so. Google Voice, I can tell Google Voice to go fuck yourself, but I can't, because ah, I run my own voicemail system now, motherfuckers! <laughs> 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 and, uh, 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 you just doing it just because of this Rob point. I saw that I liked. Uh, <laughs> Seriously. Not much that I can remember. Oh, uh, uh, CM Punk saying "God damn it" and getting bleeped was funny to me, and I also appreciate his great sports almanac reference. Yes, I don't give a fuck what you think, Matt <laughs> Mike. I really don't. <laughs> it's a fun <laughs> reference every time. It is dismissive wanking motion to you, sir. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fucking diggity. The F. Yeah, I don't even give a fuck. I'm not even going back. The F. Is for fruit smoothies, which are delicious when you add in spinach and carrots. I bid you good day. I am seriously considering right. second thoughts on financial advice from that man. <laughs> yeah. um, I, like I, I feel like I feel like uh, after the constant stream of amazing uh, matches from the Shield and Daniel Bryan and all those guys on Raw, we need to have like a new segment where we just pick our favorite spot from that match. Yeah, that could be. My uh, favorite was when Seth Rollins stepped on r head and sent him into oblivion. Oh my <laughs> that god, that was incredible. <laughs> it was, it was. Uh, from the chat room, Leg Kick TKO says, it loses some of the charm without the fuzziness and distortion. <laughs> I thought it brought out more of his actual character that we know and love from Google Hangout. It mm-hmm. is. That's just me. Uh, keep it up. Let me know how you, how you recorded that. If you're just doing that, I'm guessing it might be just a voice memo or something. Uh, so, I, and, and attached to that about the fan fix, I do have to bring up this tweet I saw today and had to retweet to the Mayhem Show. Uh, the official WWE AG Lee, AJ Lee Twitter says, When Boss Lady talked about finding love, then moved in close to my face, I thought that entry in my dream journal was about to come true. <laughs> So she's in on the fanfic as well. So fantastic. So uh, that, I think that's all the fan interactions we have on tap for right now. A little bit later on some of the questions that we put out earlier today. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, uh, LB, you're going to tell us a little something, I believe. I am. Speaking of dream journals, what a perfect segue you presented for me, Sorgatron. I really do appreciate it. Um, We all have dreams, we have hopes, and we have dreams, we have sexy dreams. Sexy dreams that sometimes make our sheets stick to our peens. That's right, folks. I didn't mean to rhyme, but it went ahead and happened anyway. Um, And, you know, cast members in these dreams uh, might be special ladies from special movies that we watch. Um, let's bring it all around. Go on over to WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Click on the best-looking banner we have. It's the one with the very pretty lady. And uh, that will take you to the website for Fleshlight. Shop as you would normally and uh, help out your friends here at the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, and, and... It's not just regular old things to put your dick in. It's not just Avatar uh, vaginas and My Little Pony vaginas. No, no, it's much more. Uh, you, all of your dream girls are there waiting for you uh, on the Fleshlights website. That's right. Stoya, Jenna Hayes, Lisa Ann, BB Jones, Tori Black, Jessica Drake, Alexis Texas, Tegan Presley, Aza... Uh, he's Akira, even Jesse Jane. You can get fleshlights modeled off of uh, mouths, vaginas, and assholes of each and every one of them. It is absolute madness. Go, go now to WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Click on the best looking banner we have and go nuts. Tell them DJ Lunchbox sent you. Fleshlight, treat your dick right. Ooh, I like that one. That was good. You like the Dr. Seuss of depravity, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I'm putting that on my resume. To <laughs> to Amen uh, for the Texas perspective on the indie minutes. Oh God, I, I sorry, I cannot wait until we're famous enough till we get to make our own personalized flashlights. It's going to be phenomenal. Whoa. I can't wait. So yeah. 
uh, in the wrestling for this week. Wrapping that around um, my head. Yeah. Um, speaking of indie wrestling, speaking of stuff that's going on in the Pittsburgh area that involves Sorgatron Media, our good friends at International Wrestling Cartel have an event this weekend called Friday Night Fights on Guess When? Friday! Tuesday! September no, oh, 20th. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sorg better reschedule his calendar. Oh, crap. Uh, Friday- I, need a, I need a book of videographer. <laughs> yeah. Tuesday. Friday Night Fights on Friday, September 27th, and hopefully Sorgatron Media will be there. Sorg, are you <laughs> we excited? We could show up. We could show up. I am excited. Uh, I'm always excited for new venues like this. Um, uh, it's uh, Zima Ion, TNA, homegrown uh, uh, IWC guy is going to be there. Uh, they're still doing all kinds of crazy stuff with Justin Labar. Um, I have not heard of Mac- Mark Madden is going to attend this one. He's been in like, the last couple. Oh. John McTenzie, friend of the show, Logan Shulo in a title match, Facade and Ashton Amherst. Um, it, it's uh, uh, it, it's going to be a good show. Colin Delaney, um, big eight-man uh, tag team action, lots of friends of the show on this. Um, and, and I'm really excited, they, again, like to see them in another venue. I remember we were talking about a few years ago, they were at core time every month. It seemed like it was lag- lagging a little bit. Um, and uh, they've, they've had two years where they've just, like, filled the place down there in white oak pa uh so and and, and why not uh so this is one of those house shows where uh you know we'll be down there we'll have chachi at ringside and we'll have my little hard cam like we do at uh the clear fields and the new and everything uh but it's gonna be a fun little show uh, you know not the big productions like we do at core time um but always i, I think the wrestling kind of speaks for itself at these shows uh so looking forward to that I, and and if you haven't yet if, if this is uh if you catch in this wednesday uh, we'll still be running the contest uh we're giving away just like we did it with rwa a couple weeks ago uh we're going to give away two free tickets uh to this show so if you are here in the pittsburgh area can get yourself the white oak pa which is just probably i don't know what is it like probably like a 30 minute drive from downtown pittsburgh if does that sound right locals um all right over towards mckeesport stuff like that uh you know closer actually than i than iwc typically is out in court time uh so if you're interested in that go to uh at mayhem show Follow the Twitter account. Look for those tweets. We're, t- we're putting them out about twice a day uh, where it says retweet and follow us for uh, a chance at uh, two free tickets. Uh, mostly the follow us uh, one. You know, we like followers. And also uh, so we can direct message you to get your uh, official information uh, uh, when you win and everything like that. Uh, so please do that uh, again at Mayhem Show and check out our friends IWCWrestling.com. And check out the great Aftershock. Uh, show that Justin Plummer's been doing uh, some great background backstage stuff. If you want to get a sampling of IWC wrestling, great clips in there. It feels like it really does in the long run feel like the old. Um, I don't want to say WWF superstars, um, maybe like a WWF prime time kind of thing. You know, there's like the event center kind of feel backstage interviews, clips of matches, um, pretty significant clips of matches, actually a um, little to the point where I'm kind of worried about my DVD sales, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but no, no, actually, and actually all the full segments with Justin Labar from Cheer Shot Reality are, are involved in those. Um, it really is like kind of part of the full IWC experience at this point. You go to the shows or watch the DVDs and you watch Aftershock as part of it. And I think they're, he's doing a really good job of bringing it together and make it like a whole product with, I think a lot of indies fail at, to be honest. Um, so uh, really good stuff there. I, I wouldn't be involved in it if I didn't believe in it. So, Awesome. So, what else is going on out there, Eamon? There is stuff going on in independent wrestling, Slug. More importantly, Ring of Honor. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Uh, More importantly, Ring of Honor had their, uh, as we mentioned, their eye pay per view this past weekend. Obviously, we went over the eye pay per view troubles. But let's talk about the actual event as the finals, or the semifinals and finals for the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Title Tournament were held. And we have a brand new Ring of Honor World Champion, and that is Adam Cole. Uh, He holds both the Ring of Honor and Pro Wrestling Guerrilla uh, Championships simultaneously, which is a big feat for him. Uh, Defeating Michael Elgin in the finals of the tournament uh, before 
before uh, after beating Tommaso Ciampa in the semifinals. Uh, very big moment. Uh, Cole picking up the victory. Jay Briscoe, uh, who was injured before having to relinquish the title, handing it respectfully to Adam Cole, and then Adam Cole turning his back on Jay Briscoe and blasting him in the back of the head with the championship belt, and then also attacking Michael Elgin. So it looks like we're going to see a new side of Adam Cole very soon in Ring of Honor. Uh, and they had their TV tapings this past weekend also in Philadelphia. So keep your eye out for Ring of Honor on your television sets uh, if you have a Sinclair Broadcasting affiliate. I got it right this time, so I, Yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go. Also, I'll point uh, so out, yeah. maybe, uh, I'd, uh, maybe uh, Ring of Honor needs to watch where they're putting their images because I got this under the world title tournament picture. Oh, no. Oh, look at this popular. Is this your photo? <laughs> Upgrade the plus for additional bandwidth. Mm. What? So I presume this is just information about the tournament going into the weekend that I'm looking yes, at here. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, everybody was involved with it. Um, I'm not getting good reviews from a certain individual in the chat room about oh. about about the weekend. Is um, this the? Oh yeah. Oh, uh, Jessica uh, Lightkick TKO was live at the event, uh, and uh, yeah, Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor has been interesting as of late. I I think it's. A, it's an acquired taste. <laughs> the comment is so many GD near falls blood womp womp. Really, we're gonna censor goddamn this one. That, that's what are we Monday Night show. Raw? Yes. Sorg is the CM Punk of the Wrestling Mayhem show. Yep. I'm not gonna drop the mic because I paid for them. <laughs> <laughs> no pipe bombs here. Nope, because that is expansive. Because so uh, because I have to clean it up. Yeah. Um, Ring of Honor is an inquiry taste. I uh, I got to see a bit of the pay per view, the parts that I got to see. Um, I really did like the Adam Cole uh, Tommaso Champa match. I thought that match was very good. Um, yeah, there's it's something I I enjoyed when they um they came to San Antonio this past summer. Speaking of that, uh, tickets go on sale this weekend for their return to San Antonio in February. So keep an eye out for that, San Antonio people. Uh, well, yeah. Okay, wait, some other comments. A dude threw a quarter at. Shaliza Sparks, Sparks, who is a member of uh, Truth Martini. Yeah, and said, show me your tits, because ROH is the dirt fucking worst. Yeah. Wow. Um, (laughs) Philadelphia, ladies and gentlemen. Was it in Philly? Yeah, it was in Philly. 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 Oh, yeah, that's Philadelphia. That, that's just Philadelphia. Yeah, Philadelphia. No, 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 no. Yeah, that yeah. Was, we do not. That, that experience did not happen in Pittsburgh. I can tell you that. Um yeah. yeah, but but to be fair, you know, considering the things that they're doing with that group of people, like it kind of goes with it. It's encouraging that. So I just, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Just just that the people don't throw any form of currency at people. Uh, that'd be nice. <laughs> so yeah, uh, if you want to check out Ring of Honor, go to rhwrestling.com and uh, go check them out if you're interested in uh, checking out some. But please R-O-H keep your quarters wrestling. in your pockets. Keep the quarters in their pockets. Maybe use some PayPal. I don't know. Unless they're uh, repeat. And, and, and now, next you're going to talk about what I think is the the biggest visual turnaround in wrestling websites I've ever fucking seen. Wow. Thank you, Sorg. That makes me happy inside. <laughs> uh, Sorg is mentioning about, because he's uh, following my notes, Inspire Pro Wrestling, <laughs> that company I work for, we got a brand new website. Look at this thing. What? And Look at this. I it's a real it website. Lot. They're not oh, bullshitting damn. this thing. It no, looks really good. I, and I'm I know very how the buttons it. work. It's not some weird thing. And there's a nice looking logo. It's, 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 ah, geez, a little bit big for my, my, so my going to come. I am all over this website. <laughs> so I love somebody because I don't have to clean it up. So I save it yeah. for the flashlight. Look, you got real pictures of the roster. Oh, man. Where's your, where's <laughs> your picture? Is- Sorg is about to look lose his shit All here the, on the pictures podcast. look the same. Man, this does not happen in indie wrestling. But, uh, <laughs> wheels, wheels, take notes. <laughs> take notes or steal their template. Okay? Um, <laughs> or contact the good friend uh, that made that website, uh, Mr. Lex Librand of Greenlit Studios. Thank you, Lex. For That's not a real us. name. That is a real name. Like, this, this site looks so good. You must have bartered something for this design. I, that you, I, you, I did you guys to, didn't pay for this with indie money. I did have to sell one of my future children. There you go. That, now chicken. it makes sense. It happens. And two of his uh, teeth. 
but yeah, you can go to inspireprowrestling.com and uh, <laughs> oh, hey, there's wrestling, wrestling here. Hey, there's wrestling there. You can order tickets for our event on October 13th at the Marquesa Hall and Theater in Austin, Texas. It will be a Austin, fun time. Texas. So if you're anywhere in Texas, go to the show. Absolutely, it's not that far. Of a You've drive. learned it's anything from how nice. we operate here. Absolutely. Also, uh, you can check out our YouTube channel. I know there was a confusion with the URL before uh, last time I mentioned it, but it is youtube.com slash inspire pro video. Thank you. So you can go check that out. That makes and you can sense. See, and you can see um, our uh, beginning event in its entirety, including the main event between ACH, Chuck Taylor, and Davey Vega. That was spectacular. Uh, and yeah, we're going to be looking to produce more content. We're going to be looking to, you know, get more stuff out to you and, and definitely uh, improve in the, uh, in the production aspect of it all. I am very excited to uh, see how this company is going to progress. I'm very excited to be working for this company uh, and continue my run as a commentator because that's something that I do now. Uh, and yeah, definitely go check out Inspire Pro, uh, inspireprowrestling.com. YouTube.com slash Inspire Pro Video, uh, Twitter at Inspire Pro Res, Facebook.com Inspire Pro Wrestling. We got all the fucking mediums for you to check out and uh, go get your Inspire Pro Wrestling. So definitely awesome. go check us out. Is there any indie wrestling that doesn't involve companies we work with? Not this weekend. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, we're going to kind of like I didn't, want, I, I didn't want it to be like. We're completely talking about only our own shit here, so no, 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 no. Um, Trust, but, I uh, next week's will be definitely a little bit more spacious. Very light week for indie wrestling this week, okay? Except for the stuff we happen to be involved with, so yeah. <laughs> All right, no understandable. That's great. Thank you, Amen, for the indie minute. Uh, yeah. So, guys, let's talk <laughs> some more self promotional. Uh, the <laughs> Let's talk about some more promotions. Let me close my GTA 3 on my brand new iPhone here and uh, open up. And actually, I have not opened this up to see how it looks on the new iPhone. But the WMS Gold Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold, it's loading just fine. Fills uh, about the whole screen there on my new iPhone 5S. You can check out how it fills out your area on iPads and <laughs> Android devices. You can get on, on the iOS app store as well as the Amazon app store on Android. This is um, my area fun. Includes some great bonus content, uh, but it also gives you uh, access to this show audio-wise. All the links to the, the voicemail, the phone number, uh, the, the, the email, the Twitters, the Facebooks, all straight from this app from one place, so you can live in the mayhem world. Uh, but let's uh, take a look real quick at a little bit of those, a uh, uh, little bit of gold, and we'll be right back with Remember When. Okay. Oh, there we go. Very gentle. And if I position Darth Vader to keep it from sliding any further. Do you just have like positioned like like on your toys people interested on Snapchat, which I still don't completely understand that concept. Yeah, I can't. I, I don't. Did they, I don't, did they so send do you I, a picture of their penis ten minutes afterwards? So, so I, I, I get a I get a lot of Snapchats. I never send them. E M C E E L B. I've been told Snapchat's a place to be, so that's where you can find little old me. Pacing and pacing, rehab, pacing and pacing. I've been waiting for the right time to shake him and break him. I'm a sniper in the long grass, waiting to the full pass. Got him in my sight, I'ma break him, then I fall back. If you think that you're ready to go to war, you have underestimated. I'm ready to take them all. The fuck can you take me for? I'm ready to kick the brawl. Yeah, I've been punching up and never meant anything before. Just know I got the jump now. Never gave a fuck out. You think I got a position? I also up clown. Take time and it's crucial. I've been playing just the years. What the fuck you think I'm used to? Born a king piece. I play my part the way I cut the board. I know I make my mark the way I spark. Same way I made my start with a 40 or more liquor. Well, I'll fix the heart. Guys, <laughs> welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're so hey, glad you could show. make it. Hey, it's time for that segment we know and love that we usually do right now after those ads that you just saw. Remember when? Hmm. Who's gonna remember when? 
Gonna remember again and again. Gonna remember till we cycle back to Sorg's face on the video, man. Thank you, LB, for those sweet, dulcet tones. Uh, this week on Remember When, I gotta remember how, how I, pl I phrased this. Uh, so last night, CM Punk, of course, uh, came back. Big reaction, big crazy promo. Is Chicago Black Hawks? Yeah. Black Hawks? When yeah. the Black Wings? That's not Chicago right. Black People. Like, <laughs> oh, no. What's a, what's That's the name of the name team. They're the Chicago team. Black People. Um, But no. I, I just choked on so <laughs> Big thing. <laughs> <laughs> Big thing going That's what on. you get, you the piece Chicago, of shit. The Chicago Ninjas. <laughs> uh, but I thought I would think back to uh, any big moments that you recall uh, where, like, the hometown, a hometown reaction, a hometown homecoming, a big thing happened for the hometown guy. Um, we, we, we did chime in uh, with Facebook, got a couple of responses, so I want to touch base with them as well. Uh, but but you, you, have, you guys have anything for this? Uh, and I'll let whoever wants to go first, LB. Me, me, me. Eamon? <laughs> Eamon? I'm taking a Snapchat, motherfucker. <laughs> this is the best show ever. I fucking love you guys. Um, oh I have a Chicago Steve one. Blackman's. <laughs> Like swinging them around. <laughs> Say something, Avon. <laughs> Say something, <laughs> not funny. <laughs> Canada. Canada. <laughs> <I was rabbit laughs> <in Canada. laughs> and they love other wrestlers that are from Canada. Yes. Uh, I remember one of my favorite matches that I've watched uh, uh, was back in 2006 at Unforgiven, and it was the Edge John Cena TLC match. I was in Toronto, yeah. uh, and it was a big thing because Edge was like the sort of big heel in the company, and he wanted his type of match in his hometown because of the reaction he was going to get. And that was, I think, one of the. I, I feel like that was a point that you could like pinpoint as one of the moments where John Cena started to get those boos that have sort of been like a part of his career now for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it was a interesting crowd. Toronto is always very interesting when it comes to wrestling crowds. Uh, they had Edge, and they also had uh, Trish Stratus's final match also in Toronto. So at that same event. So yeah, it was a pretty crazy night. Awesome. Who else has a thing to remember? Uh, I, I went out the second, uh, Jim Shireman over on the wrestling man show, Facebook, uh, board. He, he's saying, uh, Kurt angle beat Steve Austin in Pittsburgh on the first pay-per-view post nine 11 back in 2001. Unreal hometown stuff going on that night. Uh, I, yeah, I was there for that. That was my, I think that was my first pay-per-view I ever attended actually. And probably my second wrestling show. Um, but yeah, I remember that was a really big moment. It's before we knew who Karen Angle was, and we saw her in, in the ring <laughs> celebrating with the kids and everything like that. Um, back when marriage was normal. Yes, yes. Yep. Back when she was just a former stripper. Um, maybe a current <laughs> stripper. Uh, so I know that was a really good, really cool moment. Aside from the you know Steve Austin weird face flicky thing that was weirding me out from the set. You remember that where it was like his face and his face and his face. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember getting a SmackDown Shut Your Mouth, and they had that arena, yeah. and I hadn't been watching wrestling at the time of the actual pay per view, <laughs> and that set scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it was a good show from what I recall and everything, and it really built to that. And it was great to have the, the Pittsburgh hometown reaction and, and be there for that. So I'm completely with Charmin on that one. So, uh, Bobby? Um, mine's not really a hometown, per se, but it's a home country. Um, I'm thinking a 1992 SummerSlam with uh, Davey Boy Smith versus Bret Hart. Mm. Uh, when Davey Boy won the Intercontinental Championship from Bret Hart. Mm -hmm. crowd erupted i mean it was awesome yeah. loved that moment oh yeah i mean i think that counts yeah that counts mm -hmm. um what about you lb uh mine isn't necessarily specific moments and uh i could go ahead and say home country and name every moment on raw but um 
it, it was uh, the fact that every single time that they were in Charlotte, North Carolina, it was like a running gag that Ric Flair was going to get fucked up by somebody. <laughs> and it happened every single time he See? would end up naked, yeah. getting beaten up, elbow <laughs> dropping books, and then getting beat up later, getting hit by cars. Fucking Ric Flair does not have a good time uh, when they're in his hometown. Same thing happens to JR, though, right? Yeah. And, like, sometimes, okay. like, yeah, Beth Oklahoma. Phoenix always seemed to lose when she was in Buffalo. You know, I mean, there was... Never, there was I, I, I never understood the reason. Beth Phoenix is from Phoenix. <laughs> right. She's from Arizona. It's in the name. Yeah, she always lost in Buffalo. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a time where she did like I think she won like a divas belt or women's belt or something uh, mm-hmm. up there. Uh, so there's. Well, that. no, I, I know the she lost to Kelly Kelly like for the second or third time like in Buffalo. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. Leg kick in the chat says, "I remember when the time came went back to hell, Detroit." <laughs> Huh. Uh, and also, oh, she's not wrong. She's not wrong. No, no. From the Facebook page again, we, we put this question out earlier. Uh, Mad Mike says that we want Ryder Chance at the Survivor Series in the Garden were massive, and he wasn't oh, even Ryder. on the show. Oh, uh, remember a little, when? A little more discussion from that. Uh, Tony Garza remembers uh, Bret Hart getting screwed in Canada. Of course, if that counts. Big crowd reaction there. I, I think that does count actually because of, of the all the places you thought a riot was going to go down, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and see if there's anything else just peeking through here. No, another big one is uh, CM Punk, uh, Money in the Bank. Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, I think it's the one. I'm surprised we yeah. haven't said that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, well, I mean, that's, you know, especially given, you know, last night, you, it always has a great reaction. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, it, it's. Yeah, it, 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 I like when they play off something, especially when it like surrounds a pay per view, like it did with CM Punk that that you know that time. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I think it's kind of cool uh, to get those sort of reactions out of people. Yeah, yeah, they you know, get that. Uh, what is it? Uh, not national pride. There's a word for it. Hometown but, pride. Yeah, really. Um, and especially, and, and you're lo- you're talking about nationalism. Towns, that's it, Bobby. Thank you're, you. You're talking about towns where. They're very prideful about where they are. We were talking about Pittsburgh. We're talking about Chicago. We're talking about Canada as a whole, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> really. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we're, we're talking about New York City. Like, if you're from either of those cities, you're very, very proud to be from that city, typically. Not to try. to be an American. At mm-hmm. least I know I'm free. Okay. No, no. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> right. Um, so, you know, please let us know. Hashtag remember when. Oh, Yashi Tatsu got a huge pop in the Tokyo Dome, says Mad Mike. So there you go. <laughs> Jingoism. What's that? <laughs> um, so thanks. If you, hey, hashtag remember when. Let us know what you thought. Uh, uh, is there any big hometown uh, uh, reactions that you mi- that we missed uh, that you think we should have talked about? Let us know on Twitter at Mayhem Show, of course, on the YouTube comments. But we do also, if you haven't checked out youtubecom slash Wrestling Mayhem Show, we've been posting this to remember when, as well as the Indie Minute, independently of the show. So if those are if you're fans of those segments, you can go check those out or share them with other people if you want people to check out indie wrestling in the areas we talk about or just indie wrestling in general and see what that discussion is, or if you just kind of like the the look back segments like we do. Uh, You can go there and check those out, uh, of course. Um, So, And with that, let's let's, uh, talk about t-shirts, guys. First of all, I got my awesome new Wood shirt, Ninja Turtle shirt. Trust me. Um, But if you like sweet shirts, but they're about wrestling, uh, go to Wrestling Main... I'm sorry. Yeah, go there, too. Uh, But no, (laughs) pop over to ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. That's where you can pick up all the sweet threads representing the WMS nation. The Mayhem... What you say? Mayhem Americans represent. There's some pride for you. Uh, we got, of course, the uh, good logo, the, the old school logo there. And then two designs by the great Alex Cars, property of WMS Mayhem and the good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Your t-shirt um great stuff I, I, I have each one of these shirts from pro wrestling tees definitely a step up in quality as far as t-shirts go uh versus what we've had before through through uh past companies um they're 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 
and, and, and fantastic transfers of, of, of the designs that Alex has been doing. Uh, so do this. It, it supports Alex for the shirts that he's designed, and it supports us here at the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And while you're there, of course, there's all kinds of great stuff from all the indie wrestlers, the Ring of Honor wrestlers you know and love. Um, so, you know, pick up pick up your DDP Yoga shirt. Pick up your Kevin Steen shirt. Pick up uh, everything else, your Cole Cabana shirts, um, and just pack in a Wrestling Mayhem shirt wrong with that is your your gold dust shirts your cliff compton shirts your i'm a young buck girl uh but they got a cool uh uh they got a cool kind of video game set up there uh for theirs including information if you ever wanted did you know the young bucks have their own website they got it linked right here what? um check out check them all out uh there's what some, what and there's some friends what? of the show on there as well uh Holla. johnny carcano <laughs> so check that out prowrestlingtees.com slash wms so let's get into the round table guys young book young book uh we we <laughs> we, 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 t- we touched a, a little bit on raw uh, this week, so let's bring it back around. Uh, you guys, actually, I think only one of us watched Impact, right? Yes, like that would be me. That would be you. You know, let's hold on to that. Maybe they got something to say about that when we pull the rest of the round table in here. Uh, but Raw last night, of course, we talked about that fantastic match. Uh, we did not touch too much on the CM Punk situation. I like it. You liked it? You liked it? Again, I go to, and I talked talk about this again last night on the wrap-up. I love the Heyman. I love the idea of Heyman being the step-up guy for uh, Curtis Axel, Ryback. Guys that didn't really have much going around now have something to do. Now have somebody that will hopefully make them better. You know, at least look better. If not, they learn things about the business that will make them proceed. You know? Um, yeah. I, I can listen to Paul Heyman talk, like, all day. Yeah. Yeah. All day, he is very good at what he does, and that promo, I love that promo against uh, Punk on Raw, where I think he mentioned uh, it was that the crowd was giving him shit, obviously for being in, them being in Chicago, yeah. but also like him bragging about how at Night of Champions he pinned Chicago's number one hero and stuff like that. Yeah. Like that was really good, and Paul, you can tell Paul Heyman knows what he's doing when he you know does that kind of stuff. We've talked about in recent years about how the managers have just not been around, right? The valets, managers, I mean, they've been so sparingly used. Um, mm. And and Heyman is, is like the return of a begone era. And I love that they're letting him run with this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Right? Right, Bob? Yeah, he's like the new Bobby, Bobby the Brain Heenan, you know? Yes, I mean, definitely. He's doing a great job. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, I would like them to use um like the divas more like somebody who doesn't necessarily necessarily wrestle as like a miss elizabeth type maybe um eva marie or somebody like that you know yeah. give her a chance i, I actually i actually really enjoy summer ray ballet yeah fandango. yeah fandango i think yeah. she does a really good yeah. job of that i do um, miss and dango though <laughs> <laughs> and they, and Dango's nice and all, but I actually like Summer Rae a lot. Like her facial expressions and her sort of like if you keep an eye on her at ringside, she does a lot of really cool stuff. So I, I think she's improved a lot as uh, Fandango's valet. Um, yeah, but I mean, yeah, we're sort of seeing a resurgence of the managers. We got them. We got Zeb Coulter. Uh, mm-hmm. We got a lot of cool stuff happening. And I, I can I talk I'm, about Zeb Coulter for a second? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> this guy is. Stunningly hilarious on Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> blew my it completely blew my mind. Uh, he's like fucking um, uh, Biggie Langston level of funny. He's talking about how he invented twerking. Uh, he just talks to stupid people all day. It's it's so fucking funny. You what? need to follow Zeb Coulter on Twitter. You will not regret it's it. Just WWE Zeb. I think so. I think that's what it is. By the way, whoever's making, check, whoever's making here's the a, here's graphics... Here's a good indicator. Let me check my favorites on Twitter. <laughs> Whoever, whoever's making the graphics lately... We saw this earlier with the with the AJ Lee, but but this looks amazing <laughs> for the mm-hmm. Twitter background. So so good on them, because they had like a pretty good templated thing where it was like their face and kind of the WWE, kind of whatever splash in the background. Um, mm-hmm. oh, wait, this is great. There's some old-school pictures 
of Zeb Coulter on here. Oh, no. No, oh, boy. Who is this guy? Oh, you my. guy. And he responds, great mustache. It's an old Dutch man shirt. Oh, my God. <laughs> and to think of all people. Says, wait, 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 wait. This uh, is him. Wait, wait. This is one of um, Zeb. This is mean Mark Callis. And he says, who is that other guy? <laughs> <laughs> I to think of all the people that would be able to like understand and comprehend how to like have a good Twitter page. Dutch Mantel would be very low on my list, but he is. But yeah, he, he fucking is. rocks it. But you know, uh, this at guy, Johnny Hill says, "I would love to see a match between Santino and Zeb." Zeb's response, all in caps: "You couldn't melt and pour Santino on me." <laughs> <What>? <laughs> At, Stra- wow. at Stiat says, who does Hobo better? You or Foley? Uh, and Zeb like responds, McCoy. Hobo is serious street theater. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. He does look like Mick Foley, though. Yeah, yeah, especially that early stuff. Um, yeah. I'm trying to find one from... Did anybody see the, the big E. Langston tweet from earlier today? I saw... Oh, it about his children and why about, he's not been on TV? Yeah, oh, here it is. <laughs> here it is. It'd be, yeah, that was you, Wrestle fan. What What was this I tweet that, that you... I'm going to try to bring it up here. Uh, an at King Nish uh, tweeted him, where, uh, where are you at, E? We've been missing you on TV. Uh, Big E's response was, been tending to my babies. Lada Taviani Quenis and Exactic were running a fever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're doing it right. But hey, to the Dutch Mantel thing, you got to remember, I, I don't know if you guys remember, he was he had a blog for a good bit, I believe. Um, I think so, yeah. And I think, well, he released a book or something too, right? Um, so, so he had that kind of like conjoined uh for for a bit so i mean he's not he's not new to social media he's not new to presenting on the internet right i just think it's always cool when someone like him or a jr or someone like that have that understanding not only have that understanding but embrace it yeah yeah exactly i and and i think you know some to the varying degrees because you have um i mean you have guys like stone cold that are trying and maybe not doing so good and he's just kind of tweeting his life you know and, and that's cool and he's playing with video and everything um but to see these guys i i that's that's absolutely tremendous um i'm still trying to wrap my head around speaking of old people I, this is kind of an experience i had earlier today does anybody remember lalani kai yeah sure and i don't know if this is a, i'm pretty sure it's a real account from the little bit i looked at it but i think lalani kai liked the photo on facebook of mine Huh. Wow. Yeah, it involved, yeah. It involved Joe Dabrowski in, in facade. So that did she pull a Kurt uh, Kurt Braunohler? Oh, what's that? Or she goes back in your photos like a year and just randomly likes one of them. Um, Are you just playing basketball or something? No, but they, they, there's a <laughs> the, no, but but the picture is I think from from March around WrestleMania. I think it's a WrestleCon okay. pick. Or, uh, no, actually, it might be more recent. It might it might be in a Montreal pick uh, from from one of the uh, later shows. Um, but that and here's another not anomaly if since we're talking social media and wrestling somebody went and favorited or retweeted like all of like like one of our uh Chris Benoit tweets from like when it happened wow and then i wow. looked at their account and they did the same thing to several Chris Benoit tweets from when it happened uh, huh that was oh, messed that up. was actually Kimono Wanalea. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck, Bobby? I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> get off. I'll be take over. <laughs> well, oh, folks, man. that's been our show for the evening. Thank you for tuning into the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can find us as always on WrestlingMayhemShow.com every Tuesday night at oh, live.sorgatronmedia.com, where you can hear that Wait. and many more fine jokes from Bobby F. J. Town. I'm a <laughs> Bobby, we love you. <laughs> On that note, I'm going to because because it can't get any worse than this. I'm going to open up the round table oh, to to the people that have joined us here in yeah. in the Google Hangout. So thank. Jeez. <laughs> Come on, a while later. Give me something. Give me somebody in the hangout. Give me out. an ECW. I have no idea. I have no idea. Here's the one that got naked, Bobby. Wheels, what do you want to talk about? Roof. What do I want to talk about? Come on, a while later. How are you going to follow that up? About come on, a while later. Oh, I think we know what he wants to talk about. <laughs> Snapchat.
<laughs> we're, talking about, uh, we're talking about Snapchat. I got a, I got a DJ lunchbox Snapchat. <laughs> yes, you do, oh, and you motherfuckers picture. better respond to it. I bet you know. I I bet Matt Hardy's really good at Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see any dick pics. I'm telling you, Matt Hardy that takes up. But don't follow Matt Hardy. <laughs> takes up the entire screen. What do you want to talk about? Anything you want to touch on that we talked about, or 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 new topics? <laughs> Uh, let's see. Matt Hardy's penis just looks like gray flaps. <laughs> it's, it's like roast beef that sat out for too long. Oh my God. I'm thinking Arby's. Oh. <laughs> it's like rotten James. Arby's. It's like oh. dusty curtains. Oh, oh Jesus! Good. Wow! Right. So it's happening. like a it's like a very wrinkly gray dress shirt. <laughs> I have one of those right now. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. Eamon, do you have a very a wrinkly gray dress shirt or do you have a Matt Hardy penis? I'll leave that up for you to decide. <laughs> okay. I we continued. So uh, someone said bring up a topic. Uh, maybe TNA, because we can talk about... Yes, yes. I tried bringing up Mickey James when Arby's was mentioned, but people uh, were laughing. N A S T Y because it is. What? What? I don't get it. I said A S T Y because it is nasty. You know. Oh, I thought you said ASCII. Uh, I don't yeah. understand. Oh, speaking of ASCIIs, ask Sorg how his day was. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> what? What is happening? You put me off earlier. I you what? Put me off earlier. Me awesome. camera. He sent you a peen, Sorg. He, he sent you a peen on the Twitter. Sorg, a peen on the Twitter. Sorg, Sorg, I also sent you a shield spoiler that was just a peen. Yes, I saw that as well. <laughs> Notice I'm not wearing it right now. Thank you very spoiler much. Spoiler alert. Fuck. <laughs> it's actually currently on his grandmother. Good work, guys. <laughs> yes. Cool. Let's talk about God's how DNA tries to get away. It wouldn't be the first time Sorg's grandmother. Was it grandfather? I can't remember. I saw your post. I don't remember. It was my, it was my grandfather. Yes. Okay. Sorry. You guys, Mixed I'm going gonna, gonna to send all of you an American Greetings WWE card. What? <laughs> <laughs> they just sent a deal with the American Greetings, by the way. <laughs> Breaking news. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Breaking so. news. American Greetings card still exists. Yep. Wow. No so, deal with them, Mark. So. So, topics about wrestling. Yeah, wrestling. How about those wrestlers yeah, that's that it. happened that's times? Um, uh, did Dixie Carter turn heel? Yes, she did. Who gives a fuck? TNA I once think again, you have to have, like, a to brain to be able to actually make a decision. Heel or face. TNA sucks, and I'm ornery. Now, I, I, I have a question. This is well, more of a logistical question about TNA. If Dixie Carter is now becoming a heel... Does that make the aces and eights a face? I don't even Ooh. know anymore. Are there any All aces and eights left? Shades of gray, All man. Shades of gray. I have a question. I have a yes. question for this round table. Yes. yes. This is an sure. answer that each person can answer. Question that each person, I'm so tired, can answer. <laughs> each person can answer my question. And my question <laughs> is, how would you save TNA? Ooh. Don't we Ooh. ask this question every like month? No, no, I, I, not legitimately. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not not expecting. No, okay, a, hold not on. Expecting I, I have a real answer. answer for this. Okay. I have a good answer for this. All right, I'm listening. Okay, a bound for glory. You have AJ. You have um, a segment at the top of the show uh, with Dixie Carter telling Bully Ray. Bully, if you don't keep your TNA title tonight, the Aces and Eights have to disband. First and foremost, because the Aces and Eights thing has run its course, so it needs to be it needs to go away. Yeah, before it becomes NWO red and black. Yes, or pink and, and yellow. Then you have AJ Styles beat Bully Ray when, um, like Nux or someone like it backfires. Like the Aces and Eights try to help and it backfires completely. So Bully's mad at them anyway. Then AJ pulls the belt up and he grabs the microphone and he says, you know what? You fans are so supportive of me. Everyone in the back, except for Dixie Carr, was so supportive of me. 
I'm going to stay with TNA. I'm not going to do what some other guys would do and take this belt, kiss Dixie Carter goodbye, and run to the back. And then Dixie comes out, all smiles, and AJ says, you know what? A lot of great men have had held this belt. Kurt Angle, Sting, you know, Anderson, Bully Ray, whatever. Then he takes the belt, he throws it down, and he says, this company is better than this belt. And he pulls out the NWA title. Boom! He go completely Shane Douglas yeah. on the whole thing and reset the company. But, but like, opposite. That's yeah. Interesting. Also, if that happens, uh, Texas gets I, TNA like forever because like the NWA pretty much runs here. So yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be the NWA, but it's got to be like TNA back maybe in the, the NWA mid south, like the old TNA title or something like like the one that Eric Young used to wear around when he was TNA champion. You realize they've the, done the shit Hardy then, Hardy right? Title. What? <laughs> I was gonna say, you realized you did dumb. Sh- they did dumb shit when they had that title, right? <laughs> yes, but you take it back, and then you have you completely like basically reboot the company. You have to come back with a six sided ring. You take out the stupid handicap ramp that Hogan has to walk out to that apparently counts the floor during a battle royal. You take out all the stuff. You basically reboot the whole company. And you start My wrestling. Man, how would you fix it? Hmm. Me? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, My method you, is, is a lot easier. You, you, you move it back to the impact zone, you burn it to the ground, and you salt the ashes, and you're just done with it. Forever. <laughs> I, 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 that it sounds like would it, certainly it sounds save like their like souls. Talking a mafia hit. It sounds like we're just being negative with this, but th- it's not an issue of storyline or anything like that. For me, what it's an issue of... they're cr- left to fix? It's an issue of crippling debt. Yeah. That is the issue here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that is the problem they need to fix. So so I mean they- so the idea is that they go back to doing in studio. The idea is that they they get back off the road. They've already cut down the pay per views that weren't making them money anyways. Probably cost them money just to get the pay per view feed out, you know, more than they probably made on those things. So they're doing the right thing there. Um I think if they're gonna keep Hogan, if they're gonna keep Sting, I think I don't know, man. I, if they're not utilizing them right, if you you go advertise Hogan, I I think they need to hire some old like product and merchandising and promotional people from WWE. To be honest, they have them. Sword. They have them. Then what? Do they? Then, then... Sword, sword. Do you remember the guy who was on Tough Enough? Um, Big. Yeah. He runs TNA. Him and Lagana. That yeah, and, yeah, and, and, and we know I mean, and Bischoff. I, and, and we're big on what Lagana does. They need to bring does. back Rinka King and just do Rinka King and not do. There yes. you go. You know, That's there you also go. true. We love the Rinka King, even though we didn't. Maybe it was helpful. We didn't understand half of what was going on. See, yeah, that's, that's fine because I don't idea. have to take him out of the United States bad. entirely. Make him a purely international uh, kind of thing. Uh, then you kind of kill it on on. Wait, wait. So like, still have shows here and just make him international or. Sure, sure. You can you can film them here for dirt cheap just, and distribute them internationally. Them and whatever money you do make, uh, do actual live shows overseas. Mm-hmm. And if you're talking about trimming the fat, which I do agree, they absolutely have to do. Um, cutting back on the pay per views is a good idea. Going back Don't to studio is a good idea. And uh, releasing some some of those really high level contracts like Hulk Hogan and Sting and like you said, people they aren't utilizing. That would be fine. Mm-hmm. I think that would be well, great. Specifically, Hogan. Drop his ass like a sack of bricks. And Eric Bischoff. Ain't nobody tuning in for those motherfuckers. <laughs> I mean, Eric Bischoff hasn't been on their program in months. No, no he's, he's purely, like, he's I mean, purely back. They could have brought him back at any time because wrestling. Yeah. And they just, like, I don't even know what they're paying for him for anymore. Or, I have no idea what isn't, they're Isn't for. he a consultant backstage? I really, I really feel like Hogan and Bischoff... Uh, like I said, I don't know what they're paying him for. <laughs> His great wrestling is on top dollar for, for them. Isn't it just an issue of that Bischoff sort of comes with Hogan? Yeah, I think it, it, does, it does kind of feel <laughs> like... And vice versa. Mm-hmm. Well, no, no, I mean, like, legitimately. I think, like, Bischoff runs a lot of Hogan's, like, dealings and stuff like that. Um, I think they need to. I agree with your going back to the roots. I don't think NWA is the answer. Um, I don't think rebranding yet again is is the answer. Um, 
I, but sword, sword, can you tell me the name of their company? Uh, they're they're TNA Wrestling, and they produce a show called Impact Wrestling on Thursday nights. Okay, because and it gets and it gets fuzzy you, from there. Yes, okay, yeah. because they will interchange those. Yeah, like a and motherfucker. This is again. Yes, they do. My God, I've big. noticed that. It's like I don't know if I'm watching Impact Wrestling or I'm watching TNA Wrestling. Yeah, so like, which one are you? Like the the one night only pay per views. I think it's. TNA Wrestling presents Impact Wrestling one night only, knockdown, knockout. What the fuck is that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but no, I mean, it, I mean they've done idea. rebranding before is the thing. What happened with fucking Open Fight Night and Gut Check? That whole I, uh, shit no, was rebranding. No, just they didn't commit. Them, you can't rebrand back. and then half-ass <laughs> it. If you're going to rebrand, you have to go whole hog. Yeah. <laughs> You can't just say, we're this now, but we're also that other thing, too, and maybe this one as well. No, you're the new fucking thing, come hell or high water, or don't fucking bother. You know what? You know what? Hold on. I brought up the website. Go ahead. ahead. Just to see. Okay? I typed in impactwrestling.com. The first thing I see at the top of their site, TNA Wrestling. Yes. (laughs) You're right. The second thing I see is shoptna.com for... Impact Wrestling merchandise. <laughs> there is, there are fundamental flaws in all of that. Now, now, did you type now, in? If, if also, they had two if, shows, if they had two shows, one called Impact and one called something else, like Explosion. No, I'm not counting that because that's not on TV. <laughs> Anything with an X is not on TV. It doesn't count. Challenge is a TV show. Reaction, now. like when they had Reaction. Then I can see maybe Impact Wrestling and Reaction, or Raw and SmackDown, or Nitro and Thunder and Impact. But it's just completely ridiculous. I feel like, like and Mike, I'm with you on this. I feel like uh, what happens with Impact Wrestling is like much what happens with like productions like this show when I'm doing it. It's something I do part time. So there's things that we initiated and forget why we started it in the first place. And then two years later, we're like, why do we still do this thing anymore? And we finally cut it out. Uh, They're at that Mm -hmm. point where they need to be saying, why do we do this anymore? Why do we have these two names? And they cut it out. It was a good idea when we started two weeks, two years ago, we had this great plan, but we fired half of the people that initiated the plan. Um, So again, I'm with you on its focus. this is it, it, it feels like it's a part-time wrestling company. I've heard a lot of wrestlers saying it really isn't a wrestling company. It's a show. Um, they need mm-hmm. to bring uh, Meshack Taylor in to help Dixie Carter design things. I, I think the answer, you <laughs> know, hey, that's only for the knockouts division, Bobby. He only, yeah. designs, he only designs women. I designing think, women. I think what needs to happen, I see, uh, I think the real thing that needs to happen, because I figure this is a top-down approach. There's something happening at the top company level that is, like, saturating everything else. Uh, WWE works as a well-oiled machine because the guy, the figurehead at the top is the yes-no man, and it trickles down through the rest of it. Uh, you can look at Vince McMahon <laughs> yes, as, as the no Steve. Man. As a snowman. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I was no. um, But... But I, you can look at Vince McMahon as the Steve Jobs of pro wrestling, right? That it's his way or the highway, and that trickles down through how the rest of the company operates. That company culture. And, and, you and people can shit on that, but it makes for a cohesive program. Exactly. Cohesive hey, hey, I just spent an ungodly amount on a fucking phone. Okay, and I also spend an ungodly amount on WWE every year. It fucking works. Don't say that it doesn't. Okay? Mm-hmm. Um... There, there's a there's a saying that has worked like people say it about WCW. Mm-hmm. People are saying it now about TNA. Too many cooks spoil the broth. That's exactly it. That's you exactly need to it. have like Dixie can be a financier of the program all she wants. Mm-hmm. That's totally fine. But you need someone who's actually in charge, who knows what they're doing, as yeah. opposed to handing it off to five or six random people and yeah. then suddenly deciding. 10 years down the road, like, I want to be a character now, even yeah. though I'm really bad at acting. Hey, we're good for Vince and Eric, right? Um, but, but I, I want to Vince was this. always on TV. Mm-hmm. Vince mm-hmm. was always on TV. Yeah. Vince was on TV back when he was fucking interviewing Andre the Giant in WWF. Yes. Like, yep. Yes. Like Vince has never not been on WWE TV. So when he made that transition, 
it was better. Let because me, he was always a constant like presence, and you always knew he was there. Let me flow a name. So what I was getting to is this idea. I think Panda Energy, Carter Family need to be done with TNA. I think it needs to go to somebody else. I think I need to keep the deal with, as long as I can keep that deal with Spike TV. Spike TV should buy it. Uh, I'm not against that idea. I'm honestly not against that idea. Um, you look at... They would, be, they would have an idea and they would run with it. Like, they wouldn't just, like, you know, or like give, Lunchbox mentioned, half-ass it. Or give just, somebody you know. else a try, and I think they would push it more. But I go along with somebody else. And maybe this is a little weird because I, I uh, it's a different company involved, but maybe they should be too. Uh, what if your purchaser is Dana White? I wouldn't mind no. that. No, no, Vanna, Vanna White. We may not like it. I think they should. But if if uh, Jessica if that goes to Bobby, despite, what the hell? Like, as as ownership, then then it'd be like Bellator wrestling, and that'd be the best sure. thing ever. Sure, I mean something something like that. I mean, who, who's running? Who, who's running on on Spike TV now? Is it Bellator? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bellator. Is that, you, you haven't noticed that Sorg from watching TNA every fucking week? Sorg doesn't watch TNA. I watched I watched their the TNA YouTube for the first time in like <laughs> months. Okay, because I wanted to see what they, they, they happened to come up. I'm like, yeah, I'll watch some TNA. I could take it in little bites. What's size their bits. YouTube name? Is it Impact Wrestling or TNA? I don't know. I <laughs> don't know. Hold on, let me find out. According to their page, <laughs> it's fucking Impact Wrestling. <laughs> See? Fundamental problem. Fundamental no, it problem. Is. No, it is. Mike, Mike. Hmm. Their, their, their TNA page is, their, their YouTube is called TNA Impact Wrestling. But the URL is Impact Wrestling. Yes, <laughs> yes. I, I was looking at it. There it is. I but, don't understand why we had to change from TNA Impact. Why did we have to change from that? Like, because they thought it was going to be different. Because it was a rebranding, and they constantly do those rebrandings, and then they don't give a <laughs> shit about them. We are wrestling, so now we have these amazing storylines. You know, I mean, that's this has always been the thing. It's that non-committal. It's it's too many cooks in the kitchen. It's too many changing hands of who the lead cook is. Um, well, the also the also thing I have to note is that they would do that same thing with uh, their divisions. Like they would put more focus on the knockout division, and that's when the X division started to decline. And like other, and then try to reinvent the tag division. That's when knockouts. The tag X division and knockout divisions for TNA right now are the dirt worst. <laughs> yeah. By the way, you guys, it's, awful. it's only like a month until Bound for Glory, and we have one match. That yeah, but that's okay. I don't mind that. But, but okay. sword, what other matches do you see lined up for? Well, I don't see anything because I just watch. As a guy who doesn't watch TNA, okay. okay. so <laughs> I, 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 Jess Amon. Do you see any other matches that they even remotely have lined up for Bound for Glory? Uh, I would say uh, knockout title match. Gail came in ODB uh, because they're the only ones in the fucking division now TJ that aren't Perkins pregnant versus or Chris injured. Nope, that's happening. Loses, up. His mask will come off. I think. I think. What? I'm looking at their site right now. Saban versus Manic this Thursday. That doesn't mean it won't happen at the pay per view. Uh, yeah, that doesn't mean anything does. really. No, Gail that doesn't Kimber's matter. Remember Gail when we had a WWE pay per view that they only Gunner announced three matches for somebody for something? Yeah, yeah. If you if you're upset, Mike, the fact that Saban and Manic are wrestling on the uh, Impact and could, that way they couldn't wrestle on the pay per view. Look at what they did with Dolph Ziggler and Dean Ambrose. <laughs> oh, God. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely in, in this day and age. It's not. It's not. Yeah, I know. But all right, have we ever been? A month away from WrestleMania and only had one match booked, or at least one match. Well, that's people that know how to book wrestling. No, no, I'm saying Bound for Glory is their WrestleMania. It's a cop. It's their big show. It's it's their biggest show of the year. Yeah, but Bound for Glory ain't WrestleMania, and TNA ain't WWE. Obviously, but this is you know this is what I'm asking. Like, have we ever had a WrestleMania where we can at least Imagine two or three other of the main matches. You Can know we I mean? say, all right, I feel like it was negative. We're going to get those commenters from your after show. Everybody say one thing Fuck good you, about assholes. TNA. <laughs> Everybody like, say, I mean, now, now, I, there's obviously a brand. They're, they're getting enough people that they can fill parts of arenas uh, in small towns. Um, they heard they apparently think they can go to San Diego and put on a show. Um, which Comic Con. 
Yeah. Uh, what yeah they should have gone to San Diego in July. That's when they should have gone to San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I wonder how that's going to go, but they're pretty good at covering up how little are actually in that arena. Um, seen firsthand, I think you did too, WrestleFan, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, like, no. Well, I, well, I, I say, yeah, lockdown wasn't that bad. Lockdown wasn't that bad. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, with that, we 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 got feel like we've been, you know, we've been we've been creative with. It. We're not TNA bashing. We're we're saying we're trying to lift it up. Like again, I think everybody here wants to see TNA succeed. And we've seen uh, hmm. such glimmers of what <laughs> 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 no. uh, we've seen. Such- I want it to succeed, but it's also way funnier to talk about when it's really fucking horrible. That's true. That's true. We we got a WCW again, guys. Congratulations. Um, so a lower quality WCW, <laughs> a, a less financed WCW. Oh, I don't know if we're at lower quality WCW yet. No. I, I was willing to watch WCW. <laughs> Remember, Vince Russo was at one point WCW champion. I, I gotta say, yeah. the last... We haven't gone there yet. The last gasp of yeah. WCW was bad, and I yeah. will hold TNA now hey. above that. Okay? Young Dragons, y'all. It was... It is a lot more coherent... Co- 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 Coherent. coherent. Now Sorg's tired. <laughs> it was a lot more coherent in uh, uh, now, or last I watched TNA when I threw my hands up, than WCW was. I mean, the only thing I probably, why I did watch was because ICP happened to be involved. So, <laughs> there you go. Um, even, even that got weird for me. <laughs> even that crossed the line. Mike Awesome. Tie dye Mike Awesome against ICP on top of a bus. Oh, yeah. but you know what? But they made tie dye Mike Awesome because they just wanted to steal him from ECW and then they didn't care what they did with him. Exactly, which was like killed yep. a, which killed a lot of talented guys' careers and in some cases actually killed them. Um but they had a really awesome oh. Taz versus Triple H match. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Guys, tell me, wow. what did you learn in wrestling this week, LB? Papa L B. Uh the Rhodes name still has value. Oh, we didn't even talk about yeah, that. They come back. Yes, and... yes, one of the greatest moments from last night that we forgot about. Um what yes. why why was Dustin in his gold dust makeup? I, I, I heard someone comment on this before. It was his war paint. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm with that. I'm with that. Now, he's, he was okay, last so, time. So he's the Joker. Sure. Okay. okay. Paint your face oh. and he's only the Joker. No, okay. because in I'm Dark Knight, they said the Joker wears makeup as his war paint. Fuck you, Wrestle fan. No, no. All right, well, 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 war. Hey, 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 we're fighting already. Hey, man, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Me? I don't know, Sorg. I learned that uh, Ryback hates bullies, and he's not going to put up with it. Oh, good. Oh, good. And it's going to be the most, the best storyline they're they're going to do. It's going to be fun, and I love it. I love you, Ryback. I love you, Ryback? (laughs) You've gone that far? I don't know. I'm drunk and tired. <laughs> Mike. Mad Mike. My favorite kind of wrestle fan. <laughs> He's going to get in the butt. Mad um, Mike, what'd yeah. you learn? <laughs> I, I learned that I actually kind of miss Total Divas. Wow. Kind of. I hear crickets. Kind of. Kind of. Hmm. I mean, because honestly. Because you don't have an article on the site now. Well, no, so no, it's not that. I don't want to go back to TNA. Oh, no, 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 we're not going to make you do that. Maybe you want to do superstars or something. No, but I've seen Eva Marie and JoJo on TV now, and I don't get to hear JoJo not speaking and Eva Marie saying how she wants to fuck people. Like, it's very odd, because now they just stand there and do nothing. Like a good diva should, right? Uh, Jessica, what about you? Uh, I learned that Roman Reigns needs to spear uh, everyone out of their boots at least ten times because it's the best thing ever. Yeah, I think he did last night, right? My God, wow. he did. He was spear. No, he didn't spear <laughs> Dolph. It was, which was unfortunate for every reason. The matter. I'm pretty sure he impregnated Justin Gabriel with his spear. I'm with. E unwear to your strong ones because I have like flak jackets flying everywhere. <laughs> wow, uh, 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 wheels! What did you learn? What did I learn? I learned I'm changing the color of my scooter. Damn it, Paul Heyman! You you took my scooter. Damn you! But that's all right because I'm a Paul Heyman guy. You know how to operate it. 
That too. <laughs> Wheels, you should you should get a um, a license plate that says this is a Paul Heyman scooter. Oh, I shall get one made. Yes. Awesome. Bobby, what'd you learn? I learned that uh, Miz's uh, accident with Randy Orton turned him into a poorly dressed uh, flight a flight or er, pilot. Um, and I also learned that uh, uh, Santino's push is uh, kind of over, I guess, because <laughs> he lost to Fandango when the week before he beat C- uh, Cesaro and Sandow. Mm-hmm. And then, like, he just lost to Fandango. I don't know why. Oh, well, <laughs> it's, he, really it's not like he really needs the win, you know? Yeah, that's true. So, um, awesome. Jeez, uh, what did I learn this week? <laughs> Um, I learned that some people don't know what who San, Sangai Loi is, as Alex learned this week. Um, who? Are you serious? Yeah, Wait, yeah, 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 yeah. He, uh, he was watching the DVD and was like, oh, who is this guy? Is he, is he Sangai Dudley? I'm like, oh, you don't know this? Uh, <laughs> oh, the guy know? who doesn't know it's someone from the 90s. Fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, right? I know, right, Amen? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I gotta say, I mean, I couldn't give Alex, I mean, he may not have known, but it's because the poor guy, I mean, if you look at Lodi then and you look at Lodi now, it looks true. like two different people. He does, he does. Um, so, uh, so, I'm sorry. Um, plus, yeah, Lodi was, was usually on WCW when Raw was actually showing good things. So. That is true. <laughs> it was, like, true. He, was, he was later in a flock age. And it's not like Lodi ever brought down signs in the awesome WCW video games. So why mm-hmm. would people know yeah, I that you know, really, true. really, you should, you should, you guys should utilize all the WCW footage. Like, I know I saw like a Lodi versus Goldberg match floating <laughs> around a few weeks ago. Like, like you guys should be utilizing it on RWA. And be like, remember this guy? We got him, you know, I, I, or something like that. Like, I, I, Will, like that I will loan you this DVD collection I have of the final year of Nitro. There <laughs> you go. Just Was he in it. the final year of Nitro? I, and now I, we're bartering in the. Ch- I have the final year of Nitro on DVD just because I wanted the last episode. Mm-hmm. So I went to Comic Con and bought uh, 2001 Monday Nitro box set. Wow. I will loan somebody my uh, season two of Designing Women so that they can forget about <laughs> TNA. Season two. Oh, on that note, guys. Delta really Perk for TNA champion. There you go. It'd Delta probably be better than what we saw, Burke. right? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Drop us a line. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Four one two four 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 great round table uh, great hangout people our great chat room all of you guys out in justin tv all of you out in mayhem america mayhem out